go to page 73. On page 72 and 73, I want us to look at the four levels of life in the oceans. Then we can better understand the food chain, the food chain. On top of the food chain are the top predators. These fish are animals that eat carnivores. These fish eat meat. If you're a carnivore, you eat meat. So these fish eat other fish. The next one are the level three carnivores. These animals are going to eat plants. They're going to eat herbivores. Level two are herbivores. These animals eat plants. These animals eat plants, oh, I see. Then the herbivores, they eat plants. And this last level is the phytoplankton and algae. This is the first level of plants. These fish eat plants. These fish eat these fish and this fish eats him. So these are the four levels of um, the food chain for fish. Okay, this man is not a scientist. He is not a doctor. He's actually a cook at a restaurant, but he has a keen interest in protecting fish. His name is Barton Seaver. Barton Seaver is a chef and conservationist, conservationist, I said it wrong, conservationist who wants our help to save the oceans. Conservationist is somebody who wants to keep life going. He wants to save the fish or he wants to save the water or he wants to save animals. That's a conservationist. Conserve means to save. Barton Seaver is a chef and conservationist who wants our help to save the oceans. Oh, he wants me and you to help him. He believes that our eating choices have a direct impact on the ocean's health. In this interview, Seaver discusses how individuals can make a big difference by making informed choices. So somebody asked Mr. Seaver these questions. Mr. Seaver, should people stop eating seafood? And Mr. Seaver said, there are certain species that have been overfished and that people should definitely avoid for environmental reasons. But I don't think we need to stop eating seafood altogether. I believe that we can save the oceans while continuing to enjoy seafood. For example, some types of seafood, such as Alaskan salmon, come from well-managed fisheries and others, such as farmed mussel and oysters, actually help to restore declining wild populations and clean up polluted waters. So he says, you can eat this one if it comes from a fishery. You can eat this one if it comes from a, um, another fishery. So I think he's talking about farming. When you do fish farming, we can eat those foods. What kind of seafood should people eat? What should they not eat? My general advice is to eat fish and shellfish that are lower on the food chain and that can be harvested with little impact on the environment. So when he says lower on the food chain, he means eating these fish and maybe some of these, eat this fish and this fish because it's lower on the food chain. He's probably gonna say, do not eat those fish. Sorry about that. My general advice is to eat fish and shellfish that are lower on the food chain and that can be harvested with little impact on the environment. Some examples include farmed mussels, clams, and oysters, anchovies, sardines, and herring. People should not eat the bigger fish of the sea, no, like tuna, orange roughy, shark, sturgeon, and swordfish. Otherwise, we will face severe shortages of these species and upset the balance of life in the ocean. 
why did you decide to dedicate your life to the ocean? I believe that the next jet, that the next great advance in human knowledge will come not from making new discover, discoveries, but rather from learning how we relate to our natural world. Humans are an essential part of nature, yet most humans do not have a very strong relationship with the world around them. I agree. When I eat food, I never think of where it came from or how my food choices will impact the environment. Thank you, Barton, for telling us about this. I have dedicated myself to helping people understand our place on this planet through the foods that we eat. Why do you believe people should care about the health of the oceans? I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. There we go. The health of the oceans is directly linked to the health of people. Hmm. I never thought about that. The ocean provides most of the air that we breathe. The ocean provides most of the air that we breathe. Think about that. If we don't have the ocean or trees, we're not going to have any oxygen. It has a big effect on the weather that we rely on for crops and food production. It also provides a necessary and vital diet for billions of people on the planet. So I don't usually say that I'm trying to save the oceans. I prefer to say that I'm trying to save the vital things that we rely on the oceans for. Now let's read this top part here. It says what we eat makes a difference. When we eat predator fish, we increase our impact on the ocean. This is because predators sit at the top of the food chain. They eat smaller fish and help to keep populations of other species from growing too large. At the bottom of the food chain are plants. They make their own food and produce all the oxygen in the ocean, just as plants on land do. Below is an illustration of an ocean food chain. The species can be classified into different levels. And we went over the levels. Level one, plants are producers of oxygen. Level two, the herbivores eat the plants. Three, the carnivores eat the herbivores. And four, the predators eat the carnivores. That is called a food chain. Thank you for watching. Thank you for reading. The reading is going to help your English more than anything.